Welcome again to Kingdom Theater, and as we open God's word once more, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to guide us into truth. We may see things differently, but give us kindness in our hearts and gentleness toward one another. And may your Holy Spirit work in us to convict us of truth. And may we all embrace truth wherever we may find it. We thank you and we praise you now in the name of your divine Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The Sound of Liberty. The USA is known as the place of liberty. In New York Harbor stands a lady with her torch raised to the sky. Liberty and freedom for all. What is the sound of liberty sound like? Would you like to hear the Liberty Bell? The Sound of Liberty was heard on D-Day, June 6, 1944, when the Liberty Bell was struck seven times by the mayor of Philadelphia and heard on a nationwide radio broadcast to announce the invasion of Europe on the beaches of Normandy, France. The U.S. had gone to war to defend liberty. There is a history of freedom and liberty. During the 42 prophetic months of 1260 literal years, there was a time of unprecedented persecution of believers. You can read of it in Revelation 12 and 13. Many believers lost their lives. Others hid in the isolated mountains of Europe. And still others fled to what we know today as the United States of America. The May Flower changed the world. It was not an easy voyage. My 10th great-grandfather was William Bradford, and he was on that ship. He was the first governor of Plymouth Rock, and they came to America for freedom of worship. It was a difficult trip, but when they arrived, they were glad, and they worshiped there. That first winter, so many of them were lost. The Mayflower, a symbol of liberty. The Liberty Bell, a symbol of liberty. The Statue of Liberty, all symbols here in the U.S. of A. Freedom of worship will become an issue. Possible? Can that really be? I said there are stormy days ahead. Not because I'm a prophet, but because I can read the Bible. I know that difficult times will come, but we need not fear. The Constitution makes provisions. It says, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So we read in the Declaration of Independence. Ronald Reagan said, We established we established no religion in this country. We command no worship. We mandate no belief. Nor will we ever. Church and state are and must remain separate. God respects our freedom. He allowed Lucifer to make choices that were against God. He allowed Eve and Adam to make choices that were against God. Joshua challenged the people, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, he said. Freedom to choose is God's way. Then the Spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. No force involved here. Revelation's final issues revolve around 
worship, and freedom of conscience. This brings us to the focus of this episode. There are two beasts in Revelation chapter 13. The first beast we have read about. Then I stood on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. The first beast identifying marks. It receives its seat of government from pagan Rome originally. It would be a worldwide system of worship. It would speak blasphemy. It would be a persecuting power. It would reign for 1,200 years. The beast's deadly wound would be healed. And the number of its name would be 666. There is no question about who this sea beast is, what it represents. It says, and all the world wondered after the beast. Today, much of the Christian world wonders after the beast, following its dictates regarding worship. The second beast follows. And I use fireworks because it's so appropriate for the good old U.S. of A. But the second beast, the earth beast, steps in front of the sea beast. It is a normal appearing beast with only two horns. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon, a very normal looking beast. The first beast dominated for 1260 years. 42 months times 30 days would be 1260 years. The same prophecy as we've read in previous episodes. 538 was when this papal power ascended its throne of control. 1798 was when the Pope was taken captive. You can read it all in history. And with it, it seemed that his power was broken. But in 1929, that deadly wound appeared to be healed. And again today, the world sends emissaries there. Using the day for a year of Numbers 14.34 and Ezekiel 4 verse 6, we come up with our timing and the answer to that timing. But the second beast appeared at the right time. The second beast, 1776, as the first beast was coming to an end, the second beast was ascending. And the second beast came out of the earth. Waters in the Bible and prophecy represent Revelation 17, 15. The waters which you saw are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. When you go to Europe, you see all of these things. You see peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. Clearly. I mean, you can just look at that map. Then when you compare it with the earth, the United States of America... The USA, very few people, multitudes, nations, tongues. They're working on a second language of Spanish now in the US of A. But it's just the opposite of Europe. And so we see this earth beast. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spoke like a dragon. Why these symbols? 
It was able to keep the word of God from being destroyed by those forces that wanted to destroy it. It requires insight, understanding, and reading from the word of God to put it all together. We have a democracy. Horns are symbols of power. These horns have no crowns, no kingly authority as compared to the sea beast. The first beast of Revelation 13, the sea beast, had those ten nations that came out of pagan Rome. And then this other power, the little horn power that came up. The second beast, Revelation 13, is referred to as the earth beast. In God, we trust. It's on our coinage, it's on our bills, and it's there in the House of Congress. But in reality, Christ is not really welcome. When you speak of spiritual things, it is rejected and ridiculed and put down. This power, this earth beast, this second beast of Revelation 13 is a world power. It says, and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, under his watchful eye, with the approval of, in his presence, Oversight by the first beast, the sea beast. And causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. A nation speaks through its laws. And when the United States of America makes laws enforcing worship issues, it's when we know we have arrived at this point. It says he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. That's the second beast. The USA was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. He, the second beast. An image has no life. It's a reflection. It's a look-alike. Its power does not come from itself because it is a mere image. A look-alike beast is given life, authority. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast, to be killed. To be killed? The image of the beast would cause this? The sea beast, the first beast, deceived and coerced the people. The image to the beast will do the same thing. And the government will provide the power to make it happen. It was Thomas Jefferson who said, I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declare that their legislature shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. When the U.S. government forces worship under penalty of death, this prophecy will have been fulfilled. When the lamb-like beast begins to speak like a dragon. How could this happen? He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Reminiscent of that Old Testament experience with the prophet Elijah. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs, miracles, which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Miracles, signs, where does the power come from? For they are the spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Revelation 16, 14. So in the end, what happens? 
Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, also referred to as the image to the sea beast, who worked signs in his presence. The beast was captured, and the false prophet was captured, who worked signs. Captured. And what happened after captured? What does the image to the sea beast do that is like the sea beast that warrants this capturing? It forces worship as the sea beast. It decreed Sunday to be its mark of authority under penalty of death. That's what the image does on behalf of the first beast. The image to the sea beast is not a nation. It is not represented as a beast. The best it can do is to be an image to the beast. The sea beast is both church and state and has ambassadors sent as emissaries from kings, queens, and presidents as if it were a kingdom all of its own which it so is described, even though it's about 200 acres square. It receives ambassadors from the world. The image to the sea beast is religious only, and it uses the authority given to it by the United States government. How does this end? How does this end? Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, image to the sea beast, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. You remember the sea beast claims as its mark Sunday worship? and says Protestants should worship on Sabbath, the seventh day, which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image, the look-like, the one who will require worship. What happens? These two were cast alive into the lake of burning, of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 19, 20. God's angel's warnings. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of waters. Worshiping the Creator is the focus of this conflict because God shows as His sign of allegiance and authority His Lord's Day, Saturday, Seventh Day, Sabbath, right from creation time. Worship the Creator. There is another day that is offered, and with that comes worship of the sea beast. So, God's plan Seventh day Sabbath, choose it, your choice. Sunday, by deception. Sunday, by miracle, fire from the sky, and ultimately, penalty of death. Is this possible? Do you remember what happened in Daniel? Daniel gave the interpretation of the great dream of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel told head of gold, Medo-Persia, followed, and then Greece, and then Rome, and then the divided kingdoms. Nebuchadnezzar said, no, 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 I want all head of gold. I want it all of gold. And he set up that great image, and he told them to bow down and worship. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, no, we're not worshiping. He said, I'm going to give you one more chance. Heat the furnace seven times hotter. And you'll be thrown into that burning, fiery furnace if you do not bow down in worship. They had to choose. 
Would they rest in Jesus? Would they trust in him or what? And they refused to worship that great image. And those big burly Babylonian soldiers picked up the three, bound them with ropes and got close enough to toss them in the fire, but it was so close that it killed those soldiers. But the three worthies stood up and walked in the fire because Jesus was with them. Jesus is the answer. If we trust Jesus today, if we will obey him today, in all that we understand, we will obey him then. I want to encourage each one of us. I've not given you every piece of information on this subject. There's more to be learned, but I've given you enough to understand the real focus. Jesus is coming. And before that, difficult times will come. But keep your eyes upon Jesus. There is no need to fear. Fear nothing. Trust in Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus who walks with us through difficult times. And you've given us information. We don't like revealing all of this information from your word because it's troublesome. But it is truth. And so, Lord, teach us. May we be willing hearers and then willing doers. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Laodicea was located about 40 miles from Philadelphia and 100 miles east of Ephesus, and it was founded by Antiochus II and named in honor of his wife Laodicea, who incidentally later poisoned him. It was located on the Lycus River and was about eight miles from Colossae to whom the book of Colossians was written and was at the crux of two major Roman roads. It was an incredibly wealthy city. It had a large banking center with large manufacturing interests. When Laodicea was destroyed by an earthquake in AD 60, they refused outside aid and rebuilt the city at their own expense. Such self-sufficiency was rare and made the city famous. They were also famous for a valuable wool found in the valleys that was soft in texture and black in color, which meant that Laodiceans almost exclusively wore black as evidence of their wealth. There was also an important school of medicine located in the temple of Karu, and connected to this school was an industry for the manufacture of a special eye medicine, cholerium, made from a famous Pyrogean stone. Laodicea was a successful and well-ordered city with proud, arrogant and self-satisfied inhabitants. They were accustomed to leisure, pleasure and entertainment as evidenced by the ruins of the amphitheatres which remain here to this day. Jesus begins his message to the church and gives them no affirmation. He tells them that they're neither hot nor cold, but they're lukewarm. This analogy would have been familiar to them. Hot water from the nearby springs here in Heriopolis was pumped down to them via aqueducts and pipes. Today you can see the remnants of these aqueducts and pipes with the mineral deposit inside them. By the time the water reached Laodicea, it was lukewarm, good for nothing. 
lukewarm water, Jesus says, I will spew out of my mouth. And if you remain in this state, I will vomit you out. There is nothing worse than a half-hearted Christian. If you are spiritually hot, then you are on fire for God. If you are cold, then there is at least the idea that whilst you are not walking with God, you are aware that you are not. But if you are lukewarm, you think you're doing good, but the reality is far from it. Laodicea's spiritual condition was such that they think they're rich, increased with goods and have need of nothing, but their level of self-awareness is non-existent and they don't know that they're wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. The counsel to Laodicea is interesting in that it either included things they thought they already had or was the opposite of what they had. They were a banking centre and yet they were counseled to buy gold tried in the fire. They had an eye clinic and yet they were told to anoint their eyes with eye salve. They prided themselves on their black clothes and yet they were told to get white raiment. The gold tried in the fire is symbolic of faith in the furnace of affliction. The eye salve represents spiritual discernment and the white raiment represents the righteousness of Christ that we need to clothe ourselves in. The name Laodicea means a people judged, and we take the time period for this church to be from 1844 to the second coming, during the time period of the judgment, and it is directly relevant to us today. The message to the Laodiceans ends with a beautiful appeal. Jesus is standing and knocking at the door of our hearts. He doesn't force his way in though. He, the person on the outside, is the one taking the initiative, pressing the door, pleading for entrance. Salvation is a personal matter, and we must open our hearts to him personally. The Bible says, if any man hears his voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him. Not only will he sup with us, but the Bible says we can sit on his throne with him. Jesus longs for an intimate relationship with us. If he is knocking at the door of your heart, then open the door and let him come in.